Hi there and a warm welcome to Fun of Flying. Now in today's video we'll be looking at how we can utilize three linear potentiometers to control the throttle, the mixture and the prop pitch levers in a Beechcraft Baron B58. And to facilitate this I've already written an Arduino sketch code incorporating the fantastic X-Plane Pro plugin from Curiosity Workshop. And in that regard, I would just like to give a big shout out to Michael, the developer, for all of his help and assistance over recent weeks. In terms of the componentry and wiring required for this project, we're using an Arduino Mega 2560 microcontroller, which will communicate with X-Plane 12 directly. And we're using three linear potentiometers that I just referred to. The potentiometers themselves are actually dual output by design, but uh, we'll only be using one output on each just for the purposes of this exercise. The pin terminals on the potentiometers that we'll be connecting to are ground, VCC and OTB, which is the output signal wire. The ground and VCC terminals will obviously join to the corresponding ground and 5 volt supply on the microcontroller and the OTB terminal will in each case be connected separately to either pin terminals A for alpha 0, alpha 1 or alpha 2. So as you can see this all looks pretty straightforward and I don't believe it should cause anyone any issues if you wanted to give this a go. As is customary here are some photographs of my little test board from all sides so that you can more clearly see how components are wired together. And if I go to this photo in particular, now as you see I've uh, labelled things up starting on the right hand side with the Mega 2560 microcontroller. Then on the left we have our three linear potentiometers. And lastly at the top we have my homemade uh, distribution board. The sole purpose of which is to individually distribute a 5 volt supply and collect all the ground returns to and from each of the potentiometers. You can see also the separate ground and 5 volt wires joining the distribution board back to the microcontroller uh, which is done for continuity purposes. Lastly we have the yellow, green and blue signal wires joining the OTB terminals on each potentiometer two pin terminals alpha 0, alpha 1 and alpha 2 on the microcontroller. Okay so that's about it as far as componentry and the wiring goes which again in my humble opinion isn't particularly complicated. Right so now we can have a look at the Arduino sketch code for this project which as I said just now incorporates the X-Plane Pro plugin that enables us to communicate directly with X-Plane 12. The first two lines of code in this section are the libraries that we need to include. The Arduino.h library uh, can be found in the Arduino IDE software by default, whereas the Xplain Pro.h library can be downloaded free from the developer's Patreon page, the link for which I've put on the screen. The second two lines of code are required for plugin functionality. So if you wish to have a go at this particular project, then just type this code exactly as shown. The next three lines of code are where we define specific pin terminals on the Mega 2560 microcontroller, to which will be connected the signal wires from each of the potentiometers. As indicated just now, we're using the analog input pin terminals alpha 0, alpha 1 and alpha 2, as the output from all three potentiometers is considered analog in nature as opposed to digital. Then we have to create space in memory to store some integer values, integers being whole numbers without any decimal places. The values in this case are those shown or recorded in X-Plane at any given time for the three data refs that we'll be using namely the lever positions for the throttle, the mixture and the propeller pitch. Now in any sketch code like this where it's taking input values from external devices 
and where those input values could change at any time, it's important for the code to constantly monitor those values in the current loop cycle and the previous loop cycle purely for comparison purposes. Then if the current and previous values differ at any point, then the code will instantly know that one or more of the potentiometers has been moved. For this to work though, we need to create even more space in memory in order to store these current and previous loop cycle values. And here on line 16 through 18, we're doing exactly that, but only for the previous loop cycle values at this stage. Later on in the void loop section of the code, we'll be creating further space in memory for the current loop cycle values as well. And I'll point that out more clearly when we get to it. Now we come to the void setup section and as all of this is either written for the sketch or the plugin to function properly, um, just retype this exactly as shown. So this brings us down to the void loop section of the code and once again, as all of the code highlighted here is either written for the sketch or the plugin to function properly, just retype it exactly as you see it. The next section relates to the two throttle levers only, which for the purposes of this project have been synchronized to act as one. Now earlier I mentioned the need for the code to be able to recognize when the physical potentiometers have been moved and it does so by comparing input values on the current loop cycle of the code against the values on the previous loop cycle. Now, having already created space in memory to store the previous loop cycle input values here on line 36 of the code where it states int throttle current is where we're now creating space in memory for the current loop cycle input value as well. We're also forcing the throttle current variable value to be equal to the analog voltage reading coming from the signal wire of our first potentiometer, whatever that happens to be on the current loop cycle of the code. On line 37, we ask the question, is the analog voltage coming from the potentiometer on the current loop cycle different from the previous loop cycle? i.e. has the potentiometer been moved. If there's no difference, then the code assumes that the potentiometer has not been moved and does nothing further on this particular loop cycle of the code. If there is a difference, however, then the code assumes the opposite and that the potentiometer has been moved and on line 40, an instruction is sent to explain to move the throttle levers by an amount equivalent to the movement made by the potentiometer. On line 39, we essentially equalize the potentiometer output value on the current and previous uh, loop cycles to neutralize the code and stop it from sending data to explain more than once per loop cycle. Having done that, we simply repeat the process for the mixture and propeller pitch levers. And just as a reminder, all of the white text here is purely arbitrary. You can use whatever naming convention you like, just as long as you're consistent with it throughout the entire code. If you're not, then the code simply will not compile properly. Then we come down to the explain inbound handler section and you'll be pleased to know that there isn't anything specific for you to do here in this case. So just retype the code exactly as shown as it is required for correct functionality of the plugin. So next we have the explain register section where we literally register our variables, namely DRF throttle, DRF mixture and DRF propeller with their associated data refs in explain. Then in each case we have something called xp.setscaling. Now I'm not going to go into any great detail about this, but what we're doing here essentially is mapping, or converting if you prefer, an analog signal scale into a digital signal scale, and at the same time making the digital signal scale compliant with the data ref values that X-Plane uses. For example, in the throttle section, 
we're taking an analog signal scale of 0 to 102 and mapping that to a digital scale of 0 to 1 which Xplane will then recognize for this particular data ref variable. For the mixture data ref it's a similar thing again. However when it comes to the propeller pitch data ref the minimum and maximum ends of the value scale in Xplane are actually 77 to 283 although I'm not sure of the logic behind this. Anyway it is what it is so we simply map the analog scale of 0 to 102 across to a digital scale of 77 to 283 something again that Xplane will recognize for this particular data ref variable. Then we finally come down to the last Xplane shutdown section which again you'll be pleased to note is not going to be used in this sketch although the few lines of code that you do see still need to be there for plug-in functionality. So having explained all of that probably the best thing to do now is to open Xplane 12 and load a Baron B-58 aircraft in order that we can test things out and make sure everything works as expected. Okay, so here we are in uh, X-Plane 12 and we have our little Baron B-58 uh, loaded um, and courtesy of the video overlay that you should be able to see we have our um, three linear potentiometers here. This one is for the throttle, this one is for the prop, uh, propeller pitch and this one is for the mixture. So what I'm proposing to do is uh, just operate these independently and uh, you should be able to see a response with the levers in the aircraft. So if I start with the uh, throttle here uh, yep. and idle and it clonks when it gets to the end and back again. So then we get the prop pitch little clonk there to say it's got to full travel off on and off then the last one of course is the mixture clonk good that all works okay so that's a very short video um, but it demonstrates that the code works as intended uh, which is good news so we'll leave it at that for the moment and we'll get around to uh, making a few conclusions. Now obviously I've used the throttle, the uh, propeller pitch and mixture control for this very short demonstration but you could use uh, linear or even rotary potentiometers for many other things as well such as the elevator, aileron and rudder trim the barometer, heading and omni bearing selection or OBS, the in cockpit lighting rheostats and I'm sure the list would go on and on. But for me no matter what devices we use and no matter what flight instruments we're trying to manipulate the best part is the bit in the middle namely the X-Plane Pro plug-in itself and the fact that we can use the Mega 2560 microcontroller with all its myriad of inputs and outputs. Other benefits include the fact that there isn't any need to use a human interface device i.e. an Arduino Leonardo with its limited pin terminal count. There isn't any need to issue keyboard commands and in both of these respects there's no need either to assign anything in X-Plane 12. Basically everything's done by using just one piece of code which in itself communicates directly with X-Plane 12 without any other intervention. Okay, so there we are then. we finally come to the end of this particular video, the subject of which I believe will provide all sorts of new and exciting opportunities in the future. In the meantime though, a big thank you for your continued support of my Fun of Flying channel. And if you're interested in seeing more content, then please don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button as this really helps with the old YouTube algorithm. Further, if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll try to assist you. Best wishes to you all and ta-ta for now.